When most people think about the American Civil War, battles such as Antietam, Gettysburg, and Vicksburg come to mind, the focus largely being in the Western Theater and the battles under Ulysses S. Grant in the Western Theater. But in this video, we'll be looking at the northernmost, westernmost, and easternmost battles of the American Civil War. Starting in the West, generally the furthest West that is talked about is U.S. Grant's campaign towards Vicksburg, Mississippi, with the capture of New Orleans also mentioned on occasion. However, a fair bit of fighting took place in New Mexico and Arizona, which were territories at the time. The Confederate goal this far West was an attempt to conquer areas of gold-rich California, combined with possible support in the southern section of the state if Confederate troops invaded. Not only would the gold revenue massively boost the Confederate economy, but it would require the Union to have ships blockading around the western coast as well, which was viewed as stretching into its breaking point. The furthest battle that occurred due to this was the Battle of Valverde in present-day New Mexico. This battle occurred on February the 20th of 1862. 2,600 Confederates under Henry Hopkins Silby managed to defeat 3,000 Union troops under Union General Edward Kemby. To keep it short, Kemby occupied Fort Craig, which was a major impediment for Silby on his march to Santa Fe. Hoping to drive Kemby out, Silby moved his men around the fort, intending to bring the Union troops out of their defenses and into an open battle. Blocked from crossing the Rio Grande by Union troops, a battle erupted. While the Union originally had the advantage in the battle, the mistake of weakening the center caused the Confederate charge to break through and rout the Union. This battle is also unique in that it was the first and last lance charge of the American Civil War. While this is the westernmost battle, various skirmishes took place much further west than this. For skirmishes, that would go to the Battle of Pachinko Pass, 50 miles northwest of present-day Tucson, Arizona. This was a small engagement between a cavalry patrol from California and a patrol of Confederate Arizona Rangers, resulting in three deaths for the Union and three Confederates captured. <laughs> Looking up north, the star of the war saw actions against Ohio as a large possibility, as Confederate troops occupied positions not far from the state borders. But with the welcoming of Union troops into Kentucky following Confederate General Polk's invasion, and McClellan pushing Robert E. Lee out of present-day West Virginia, heavy action taken within the state no longer seemed a threat, which was by and large true. In July of 1863, however, Confederate General John Hunt Morgan, along with nearly 2,500 hand-picked cavalry, made a daring raid into Ohio, in the hopes of diverting Union resources and troops from both Vicksburg and from being able to face Robert E. Lee's invasion of Maryland. This he failed to do, and was caught and trapped by Federal units after resting the night. The Battle of Buffington Island resulted in nearly half of Morgan's men being captured as he tried to break through the entrapment having 52 killed and another 100 severely wounded. But his story didn't end there. Further north, Morgan fought the Battle of Sandsville on the 26th, with 23 men killed and another 300 captured after once again being cut off and surrounded by Union troops. And while Morgan originally managed to elude capture again, he firmly surrendered in the evening, knowing that his chance of escape was gone. On the naval side, a battle erupted outside of Portland, Maine on June the 27th of the same year, with a Confederate schooner being met by a Union cutter and two civilian steamers. While this battle didn't result in any casualties outside of the capture of 25 Confederates, it did note the most northerly point engagement in the Western Hemisphere. And yes, I'm aware of the St. Albans raid into Vermont and the CSS Sunadoa that operated in Alaska. However, neither of these were military in objective per se and didn't result in casualties, thus not added to this list. <laughs> Actions taken by Robert E. Lee and his Army of Virginia is by far the most well-known tales of the American Civil War, and logically, you'd assume that the, that the easternmost action would be taken by this army, as they are fighting along coastal states. However, that isn't the case. On June the 19th of 1864, erupted the Battle of Cherbourg off of Cherbourg, France, between two sloops of war, the CSS Alabama under Captain Raphael Sims, and the USS Kearsarge under Captain John Winslow. The Alabama acted as a commerce raider and was docked in neutral France for repairs. The Kearsarge caught up with them and initiated a blockade while waiting for reinforcements. After five days and nowhere to go, the Alabama left 
escorted by French ironclads to the outside of France's territorial waters and engaged with the Kursarge. After an hour of combat, the Alabama started to sink, being hit below the waterline. The battle was over, causing the Confederates 40 killed and 70 wounded. The captain and a few dozen of his men managed to escape capture due to being picked up by a British yacht and three French civilian vessels.